the air mobile concept uh, was just being developed. And so consequently, you know, I, I flew the D model when I first got into over in Vietnam and then later into the Charlie model, the C model, which we, I never had flown before, but we got them in. And I transitioned into gunships and the Charlie model was a gunship. Uh, there's a photograph on, on the wall of the Charlie model. And it, so it was a much better aircraft, but they were still changes being made to them constantly. Like I went back for a second tour a year and a half later in Vietnam. Gosh, we didn't have but I think two D models in the whole company. We had all upgraded to the H model, which was a, a much better uh, because it had a, a variable inlet guide vanes on the engine. And uh, the, the D model suffers terribly as the temperature increases or altitude increases. It, it, it loses power very quickly. And the H model was much better uh, at maintaining the uh, rated horsepower. One day, I, I got, we got uh, called in and said, "Okay, we're going to do a, a large combat assault." I was flying gunships. Uh, we're going to do it early in the morning. We've got uh, Vietnamese intelligence saying that there are two uh, American prisoner of wars being held by the Viet Cong in this location, and we're gonna do a combat assault, and try to rescue them. Uh, well, Vietnamese intelligence usually was bad. I mean, it was, it, it was just not reliable. And you usually got into trouble uh, when you were conducting an operation based on Vietnamese intelligence. Uh, and uh, it, uh, we got a briefing that night on what we were gonna do. And, and sure enough, it was up in the mountains and uh, it was in a valley. It was dead end valley, it was narrow valley, which means in a, in a small landing zone we could only take in a couple of, of slicks or troop carriers at a time. We were flying below the ridge line going in, which means if they're up on the ridge line, they can shoot down at you, you can't even shoot back. Uh, the, the, the valley was so narrow that we had to fly in one way, turn around and fly out the same way, which means you were setting ducks. And I was scared to death. I don't think I, I was ever so frightened because I knew that it was a trap. I, and it, it was just bad news. And I couldn't sleep at all that night. We got up at, I think, five o'clock or, or something and went out and we started up the aircraft and I said, surely this old Charlie model We'll have at least one warning light on, because we typically we just punch them out and fly anyway. But uh, everything checked out, and I was sitting there in my aircraft, and I was thinking, I can't go. I'm I'm shaking in my boots, and uh, and all of a sudden I heard lead aircraft calls say, "Okay, uh, slicks are up." Shark three, uh, that was my call sign. Shark three, how are the guns? And I, I wanted to say, uh, we got a problem, uh, or flight's not up, but I keyed the mic and I said, shark three, flight's up, we're ready to go. And I don't even remember why I said it, but I remember, it's my job, I gotta go. And I realized at that time, that's what a brave person does. And it's got nothing to do with 
heroic actions. It's do your job. Do your duty. The military guys are nothing but civilians in a uniform. They, they're no different. Uh, there's bad guys in the military. There's good guys. But the majority of them are honest American patriots uh, that believe in this country and that are doing their job uh, and, and they're representing the American people.